Hello guys, my name is Guillaume and welcome to a new episode of Hit The Tone. What's up guys, I hope you're all doing fantastic today and welcome to this new episode of Hit The Tone on Thomas Guitars and Basses. If it's your first time here, welcome. What I do is take bits of legendary songs and try to give you all the tools you need to hit the tone. Cool thing is that you get to choose what song I'm covering next. Just put it in the comment section and I'll get to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, while well, you know, you're already down there, so close to the like button, so close to that bell, why not do it now? You know, you can always unsubscribe later. I wouldn't, because, you know, we're having fun, but, you know, give it a go. And on that, let's start with today's song, which is Purple Rain by Prince. Obviously, for that intro, we're not talking about Prince's guitar tone, but Wendy's, she's the one in charge of playing that introduction, and she's very famous for playing uh, Rickenbacker. Uh, guitar, which is what I have here today. I always make a point of saying that, you know, all the gear is expandable, you can do it with any other instrument and it's fine. Rickenbacker is kind of a weird niche instrument in that sense that it does have a very specific sound. And it's kind of hard to recreate that with just any other guitar. I would go with a semi-hollow, ideally with either a single coil or a P90. So if you have like a an Epiphone Casino, for example, or any of these kind of semi-hollow guitars with P90s, I think you're on the right track. It's also good to note that her guitar was modified quite heavily, whether it was about the pickups, the electronics, there was a lot done to it. I'm not gonna go too much into details, but basically this is the kind of, of spirit you're after. And just for reference, this is the sound of the guitar straight into the amp. We're still pretty far off from the sound we are after, so let's jump into the second part of that video, which is our amp and pedal setup. Okay, now this is really, really hard to say because it's been, it hasn't been documented that well, to be honest. There's some obvious answers in there in terms of which effects we are going to need, and some other things are just more guesses than anything else, really. As far as the amp goes, I'm going with my regular amp, Fender Hot Rod Deluxe Tweet Edition. The controls will be on your screen, and by lack of more information, I couldn't possibly tell you what was used in the studio. Then in terms of effect, there's the obvious. Chorus, right? That's super audible, that's right up there, and we are going to need the chorus, and for that I'll use the Dimension C uh, Boss, which is my favorite chorus, and I think does a really great job at, at doing that Prince thing, and maybe reverb. That one's harder to say because, again, depending on the kind of studio, the kind of miking, it could have just been a room situation. And that sort of, of air of, of warmth that you have on the recording could, could very well come from the fact that the mic was further away from the amp. But because we are close miking today, as every day, I'm just gonna add a little bit of plate reverb. That's very studio-like, uh, not too high in the mix, but just to fill up that space. And then we enter the realm of, I, I don't know, but maybe, <laughs> let's call it that. Because of the transients on the, the attack that's on the chords, regardless of the amount of chorus and, and, and reverb that's in there, I tend to think that we have some sort of a wet-dry situation. Hard to say if it was coming from two amps, if it was coming from the desk, directly uh, plugged into it when recording and then everything was made in post. Really, really hard to say. What I think is the best option for you to do it at home is, is a lot simpler than what I have going on here. Just uh, duplicate your guitar signal when you're recording, add the chorus and reverb on one, and add nothing on the other. Not even an amp simulation or nothing. Just put it in your interface, and that's it. Maybe a, a preamp in it somewhere. And that would be it, right? It's kind of harder to, to deal with when you're in a you know, real amp sort of environment. So to do that, I chose to use the JHS color box. I know it's expensive. I know it's not like, yeah, that, that, there's your easy way of doing that. It's not. 
Uh, but it's a very sort of accurate representation of what I had in mind, and it's it's easy. It's on the floor. I can you know tweak it if I have to. But basically, my guitar signal is going into the color box. From the color box, I am going one way direct through an XLR cable to the interface, and that's it. That's my direct signal. That's safe. That's on the side. And from the quarter inch, I'm going out into the dimension C, the flint, and into the amp, and that is going to be my wet side of the signal. So basically what you're about to hear right now is a blend of these two and it's going to give something like this. I'm super happy with that sound. I, I really like it. I really think we're coming pretty close to the recorded version, at least definitely close enough so that if you learn that first chord and you play that, everyone will know. That's, that's, that's it. Anyways, with all of that said, and with that sound, let's go on to the final part of that video, which as usual is the most important, and is how to play the song. To play the song, your guitar has to be tuned in E standard, uh, nothing crazy there. The chord shapes, on the other hand, are pretty crazy, and the names are even worse. Now the trick with that song is to nail it the first time, because trust me when I say that that chord shape is the absolute worst, I, I genuinely think that it is. That kind of stretch is not easy for someone with, you know, I mean average sized hands, I'm not, you know, yeah they're kind of small. You really have to put it there with as much precision as you can, otherwise it's going to mute uh, your G string. And you know you don't want that either. You just want the whole chord to ring beautifully. So it's a hard one. It's a progression that I've seen being played wrong more than I think any other. So if you want to start learning that song and that is just physically impossible for you, just play an F major and, and that will be absolutely fine. Another thing that you can do, the song was played in uh, either E or uh, F. And what you can do to sort of reduce the stress on your left hand is use a capo and uh, put it on the first fret. It's not that much narrower already, but you do definitely feel that difference. And it's a lot more comfortable uh, to pull up that kind of shape. I'm sorry that was long. Um, there's just so much to say about this progression and I, I, I do want you guys to get it right. Let's now have a look at the picking side of it. Obviously, compared to the chord shapes that you have to pull off with your fretting hand, the picking may look easy. And to some extent it is, I'm not gonna lie, compared to that, it's easy. That being said, I think a common mistake that is, is made on this intro is because it's easy, you tend to not think about it so much and maybe play it a little bit too robotically. I don't, you know what I mean, in a very robotic manner. And I think that's, that's killing the whole thing about the intro as well, because it's only guitar and it's a guitar with a chorus and it needs to move and it needs to, you know, it's, it's got that thing on its own, not in relation to any other instrument. And so you want to have that soul and that kind of groove in your picking pattern as well. And that's, that's why Wendy's playing, Wendy's picking made the intro what it is. And it's not only the chord shapes and everything, but it's also the way they're being phrased. And I think that's really important too. And on that word, I think that's it. You guys have all the tools you need to head the tone on Purple Rain by Prince. I hope, as usual, that this video was useful. I hope that maybe you learned something, and if so, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. We greatly appreciate that. Don't forget to let me know in the comment section which song you'd like to see here next, and I'll get to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, I wish you all a fantastic week, and I will see you next Monday in a new episode of Hit the Tone.